So give me some snapshots from, from childhood that you think... Well, probably the most painful for me is there was an episode when I was probably around 11 or 12 where I had horrific abdominal pain. And I don't know what it actually was. I mean, looking back now, it could have just been bad gas. I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do remember lying in bed for a long time, probably a day, and just moaning with pain. I mean, just terrible, terrible pain and just sort of writhing around. It kind of <laughs> later on, I was like, that was a lot like labor, actually. Um, it, was, it was a lot like that. And so I'm in, we're in our little apartment, my mother and I, and uh, I'm, I'm just moaning and writhing in pain. And I, I can't even do what you're supposed to do, which is sit and read the Bible and pray for yourself and read books. Like, I can't even do it. And I just remember my mother telling me, Hillary, you've got you've to keep it down. If the neighbors hear, they're going to call the police and they're going to come take you away from me. Man. You know, so there was this constant fear in our family that we couldn't tell people how we really lived. And I couldn't tell people about Christian science, really, because somebody would come and take me away because nobody, quote unquote, understands. You so know, a, a real us against them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it's definitely a big part of my personality to this day that, you know, everyone's out to get me and I'm against everybody and I have to I have to be the contrarian all the time. And I know that that comes from that this feeling of. A, there was zero community in Christian science. I mean, unlike every other religion I've ever heard of, there is zero community. You don't do good works. You don't go out and do charity. There aren't church functions. They don't even have weddings or funerals because, of course, we don't believe in any of that. So you, you don't, like, hang out with other Christian scientists. You just stay home and don't <laughs> take aspirin. Yeah. You just stay home and moan in bed and suffer horribly, you know. So for our family, for me, it wasn't just the tragedy of whatever – you know, agonizing nights and days of illness that I had as a child and a young person, but it was the denial of it. You weren't even allowed to be in pain or express yourself or be unhappy or depressed or anything. It was always shut down with, you know, it's not real. You need to know the truth about this. It never happened. It's like you were raised by a religion that was the narcissistic parent. Yeah. And my mother is a raging narcissist, as are, I think, a lot of Christian scientists. I mean, she found it as an adult, so she wasn't born into it like I was. That is the, the thing that's the most amazing to me, is that somebody would come into it as, as an adult and say, this sounds great. It's amazing to me, too. And I've actually asked that question on a, an ex-Christian scientist Facebook board. You know, because I, I, I say I understand how, you know, those of us that are born are into it. We knew nothing else. But how how on earth? And she was probably she was 30 years old. She wasn't 20 even. And your mom is a bright lady. Yeah. Your your and your mom's like a jazz aficionado. Yeah. And she's a hip lady. She's not some, you know, narrow minded, like country folk kind of person. I mean, she grew up in cities. She yeah, very hip, very together very smart very funny how do we wrap our head around that what well i think she's got a personality disorder and this religion just completely fit it completely because it gives you the sense of being above everybody else of being special of being on to this supreme truth that other people don't know about it makes you this target you know, in Christian science, you think because you're onto this truth that all these evil forces are out to get you all the time. And in fact, you have to spend hours studying books every day to protect yourself from these evil forces. Is that hence the Christian science reading room? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where the books are. But we do this thing called the lesson. You know how I still say we I slip into that mm -hmm. sometimes. Um we we do the lesson every day where you mark uh, parts of the Bible and then also the Christian science uh textbook which is called science and health that are supposed to correspond with the bible and it's a long lesson i mean it's probably 45 minutes to an hour of reading and you read this thing every single day and then they read it to you at church that sunday and that's all you do is study these these meaningless circular logic metaphysical phrases that don't really mean anything and you're just supposed to wrap your mind around it. We we had this friend growing up who was kind of out of it uh, at this time. And <laughs> she had the best joke about getting to church after reading this thing, the same thing every day, getting to church and saying, hey, this is the same shit we've been reading all week. <laughs> <laughs> did it feel good to laugh with her about oh, that? Oh, it felt great. It felt great. When did you first start 
to realize that you could question it and laugh about it? That's a good question. Did I have a sense of humor about this? I probably did all along because we're a very funny family. I mean, we're very sardonic and witty and we love to make fun of things. So I I think, and that's the thing I miss most about my mother is that we could laugh about everything, including this. I mean, we could laugh about Christian science quite a lot, and yet it was still taken seriously. I don't know how that worked, but yeah. It, it sounds so complex, your relationship to your mom and this religion and one through the other. It, it, yeah, they're very intertwined, very intertwined. And we've had, we're not in contact. <laughs> we haven't been for about uh, almost 10 years now because of this. Um, should I tell that story? Sure. <laughs> so we, I felt like we always had a great relationship. In fact, I remember kind of feeling sorry for people who had that, oh, God, my mother kind of situation with their mothers. I was like, oh, well, we're not like that. I mean, my mother's great. We're best friends, and she, we're just like each other, and we enjoy each other's company, you know. And what ended up happening, though, was I moved out here to California. She moved to Brazil, which is a whole other story, but she's she's down there now. And you moved here from where? From New York City. Okay. Yeah. And so we hadn't seen much of each other in a long time, and our entire relationship really consisted of instant messaging, because that was the only way we could keep in touch 10 plus years ago before there was Skype or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I had this bad habit of, as you do, going to your mother when things, when you need comfort, you know, and you would think that I would have figured out after a lifetime of never being comforted about anything, (laughs) ever and constantly being told that didn't happen you're exaggerating get over it you would think that i would have learned that but i didn't was she that way before she was in the christian science church with you i don't know oh how old were you when she got into it i was she was pregnant with me oh okay yeah so i don't know what she was like before um but uh i'm going to assume based on her age that she was probably that kind of parent (laughs) And would have been anyway. Okay. <laughs> that kind of walk it off kind of parent. Um, so what ended up happening was around 2005, I had I had a huge, horrible tragedy, which was that I bought a fourplex in New Orleans five days before Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Katrina was coming? No. Nope. It was like long enough before that nobody knew. And oh. I signed the papers and I didn't even have the keys yet. And... Oh. And that just, I mean, I'm not going to go into the story because it's endless. I mean, this was three years of just pure hell, and I didn't even know just how bad it was going to get. But it was hell, and I'll be in debt for the rest of my life because of that. I mean, I'll never recover from that. Um, So that happened, and that was just so ridiculous You mean you didn't have a great experience with the insurance company? No. That's shocking because everybody (laughs) else did. Yeah, it was just me. Oh, my God. (laughs) Because the evil forces were attacking me. So. I swear to God, I don't know why I even have insurance because it just, it seems like everybody that I hear from gets fucked over by an insurance company. Yeah, yeah. And at least I wasn't alone, you know, in that. Little so consolation. They, yeah. Little so they, consolation. Yeah, they said it was termites that knocked the building over and, you know, stuff like that. So good times. We know they're reviewing some some of that, but <laughs> I don't, I don't, I hope, I hope you get some compensation. I but, won't. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that little yeah, sidetrack. So that was horrible. So that was a horrible thing that happened and, and caused years of unbelievable stress. I mean, I almost lost everything. It could have just been the worst thing that ever happened to me. Um, and, of course, her response to that was, you know, it didn't happen. And I mean, she happen. literally said Katrina didn't happen or I mean, like I don't know if she said it about that, um, but she did say that about the Northridge quake. When that happened, <laughs> she said it didn't happen. And I agreed with her. So I was complicit in this denial fest really? that happened because that was early on enough that I was still yeah. kind of, yeah, you're right. It didn't happen. But I still have to find a new apartment. So I guess it kind of happened. How would she explain all the pictures on TV? It's all just part of the mortal dream. All of this, everything, evidence. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. It's just mortal stuff. You know, we can we can transcend all of that by just knowing the truth. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it is so much worse than I thought it was. 
Yeah. 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 So so go ahead. So so, you, so the you problem bump. with people that have that kind of mindset, and it's not just Christian Scientists, um, is that you lose all capacity for empathy, and you lose all humanness. I mean, you just become this glassy, cold, uncaring person, which I think she probably always was, and the Christian Science just really kicked it up a notch, you know. So. So we had Katrina, and then shortly thereafter, I had this terrible run of bad luck where my car was totaled when it was parked on the street, and then my purse was stolen, and Jesus. I became an identity theft victim, and that went on. And that all happened. Those two things happened within like a couple of weeks of each other. So it was just a bad time. It was just bad luck, you know? So I, I, I instant messaged my mother all this stuff, and she kind of goes on her thing of, you know, I think you're just being attacked because you, you're, you know, you're on, you've been exposed to the truth of things. And I think, you know, I've never heard of anyone have this kind of thing happen to them. So it must be just that you're special and you're being attacked by these forces. And if you would just do some work about it, that maybe you could turn things around. So and, it's your fault. Yeah, totally my fault. And I felt myself just sort of bristling because I had been told this for 35 years, you know. And just this anger just welled up. And I forget the details of our conversation because I really blocked a lot of this out. But I fought against it. And I, I finally, in that moment, said what I've been dying to say for years, which is, you know, I've got to tell you, I really don't believe in this stuff anymore. And I never said those words because I knew probably from the day I was born that the minute I said those words to her, that she would find a way to completely cut me out of her life. And that's Everybody I know is bizarrely beautiful. Everybody I know is bizarrely beautifully fucked up in some weird way. Bizarrely beautifully fucked up in some.